race to cheer behind us. We have a good race in the chair. It's George Mason, 71. Number 21, Maryland, 66. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Bruce Posner. Uh, this was not uh, a great ending for the Tarps tonight. No, but you know what? You would think I'd be like in total misery. I'm in partial misery. It's not the end of the world. This was bound to happen. I've been saying it since the season started, even well before, that I saw the level of opponent. A loss was there. It was going to happen. We played an excellent team today. They ran the, they ran the break well. They ran, they forced the basket. And it took a long time for Maryland to find the right combination to win. And I have to tell you, I learned a lot about this team tonight. And I'm going to tell you something. They can't win without Eric Agnello. I'll tell you that now. Without him scoring points, Maryland's going to have a long season. They came back. They had a shot to tie. But uh, tonight, George Mason was the better team. Look, George Mason certainly had the better offensive player. Uh, Deshaun Sw Schwartz, 27 points. Josh Aduro at forward center made a couple of buzzer beaters against the 32nd shot clock. And Maryland, although Ayala channeled his inner Cowan or Mello there at the end, it wasn't enough. And it took a long time before Maryland became a downhill team. And there at the end, Maryland started attacking the basket. They started getting free throws. It took 32 minutes before Maryland made one free throw in a home game. I've never seen that before. So George Mason was good tonight. Yeah, there was some offensive uh, lacking power in some of the guys that I think we saw tonight. Uh, that's Russell. Had a lot of trouble scoring, Wayne. A lot of trouble. I uh, still played his aggressive game. I love Ian Martinez. All right, and he was he held up Puerto Rico's name well because he had an excellent game. As we hear the George Mason fans, rightfully so, taking their kudos. I don't know what happened at the end of that game. I don't know what who Turkey was arguing with or whatever. But and it's all right, in the heat of the moment and. Maryland lost. The season's not over. It's one staking game, and this was bound to happen. You play Vermont, you play them, and then Friday you got Huffsburg, another top mid-major. It's bound to happen. Jimmy Patos would tell you. And uh, Jimmy Patos might be joining us in a moment. We'll be back after this commercial break on the Big Dog Post Game Show, and you'll hear from Rick Chaklitz right now. We love our clients, and you'll see that if you trust us at the Jackler Small Group, the big dogs from the small firm. Find us online at bigdogsmallfirm.com. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. Jimmy, I was just on the air saying, Maryland fans are, you know, raising it's just one game against a really, really good team tonight. That's an NCAA team. Josh Adora is probably going to be a pro. He's this year's version of, in my mind, he's this year's version of Obi Toppin. He's a Atlantic 10 player. A lot of people don't know. 6'9 guy. Played really well. Kimmy English coaches his team well. And George Mason has some players. They got some transfers that are good. I thought Eric Ayala was fantastic. And the Terps just have to find a way to score a little more, maybe. But give George Mason a lot of credit. That team was picked 10th to come in the Atlantic 10. I predict their first or second can make the NCAA this year. You know, I said it. One thing you learned about the game tonight, there are some offensive shortcomings with some of the transfers, per se. And... They're not going to win if Eric Ayala doesn't put up the points. I think it was shown tonight. Do you agree? Or yeah, no, Eric Ayala, the, the answer, he had two big threes and cut it in and he, and he played good defense. George Mason, getting a getting miss free throw rebound was a big thing, but Coach Sturgeon has this under control. You got three and one after playing a really good season. Vermont is an NCAA team picked to win their league. From what I've seen, St. Bonaventure and George Mason seem to be the class of the Atlantic 10 right now. So you're playing good teams. Now you got to come back and beat Hofstra, who's been, been playing well. So everyone's going through transition phases with new transfers, etc. A lot of basketball to be played. 
And I think once the big guys start getting the ball a little more, they're going to score a little more, and it's going to be fine. Last thing, I know you're hooked up with the Wizards. What is it? How good of a job is West Hudson Jr. doing? Uh, West Hudson Jr. is doing a fantastic job. Spencer Dinwiddie, Montrez Harrell, Katibius Caldwell, Pope McCall, Kuzma. Look, they're all healthy young guys with a lot of experience and winning. And that's what it takes. It takes time to gel, but they've really done a good job working through Beal. And the Wizards are going to be really good. They're 10-3 and three in the first place. The Terps are going to be really good. We've got a long season to go. This is an NCAA basketball team. Hey, great. Thanks for having me on.